What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Tell Me More podcast presented by the Real Estate Cheat Code. Uh, I have with us CJ Churchill with the Churchill team at Rich Russo Realty and Co. So, CJ, uh, appreciate you taking time out of your day today, uh, especially for us here in Ohio. It's beautiful weather uh, for the first time in a while uh, to, to come on to the podcast and to share your story and your journey about becoming a real estate agent. Yeah, no, thank you for having me, John. It's really a pleasure. And I look forward to getting through some of your questions today and, and uh, we can dig in. So thank you again for having me. It's truly a blessing. Well, CJ, you know, on here, I'm a big believer of very, you know, when we talk about getting into the business, right? A lot of times in our industry, people are coming from a different career or they've had multiple careers, uh, you know, real estate and, and being an agent is not a, career that you typically pick right out of high school or right out of college. Um, but what I like to do with our guests is to to go back even further than that, you know, go back to childhood and really understand kind of your your upbringing and, and you know, just kind of life. So what was life like for you, you know, growing up? Yeah, thank you for asking. So I'm my mother's only child. So uh, I've been blessed with, with, with that. <laughs> Uh, but I'm my dad's youngest child of five. So um, having siblings and, and being the baby, always being treated as such, uh, both for my dad and, the, and my mom. So uh, grew up in Old Town East, um, right here in the inner city of Columbus, Ohio. So uh, graduated from Ohio State University as well. Um, I'm also a Columbus City School alum, graduated from Fort Hayes High School. So you know, growing up, really, my friends were really my family. I, I, Pretty much, I tell people all the time, like I've kind of had this large network of, of family because uh, my friends who I grew up with, many of which I'm friends still with today, have really become an extension of my family. So that's really kind of a brief overview of my childhood. College were some of the best years of my life and still have some of those friendships uh, to this day as well. But yeah, just a local kid, local kid growing up and uh, been, been really fortunate to, to have some, some good people surrounding me. Do you have any hobbies, interests or anything like that, you know, growing up through those high school years? Yeah, absolutely. So really, my first love was artwork. And one of my high school teachers, one of my high school art teachers actually pushed me to start doing more collage work. And that was some of the things that I had developed even my during my time at Ohio State. I actually had a minor in photography. So I took some film classes, um, stuff like that. So and actually, I was doing some of my early in my sales career, not really my real estate career. I was doing artwork just as much as I was doing my full time gigs at that point. So yeah. got a, some of my artwork actually in the Columbus Convention Center. And uh, I'm really actually trying to get back to being an artist uh, just as an outlet, you know, because real estate can consume you. Yeah. No, I was just going to ask if you still do it or not. I'm actually getting back to it. So there's a piece that I'm working on now. A couple of pieces I'm working on now take me a little bit longer than what I than what I would want to. But again, at this point, it's, it's almost taking up the remaining parts of my busy life. So uh, but, yo, art is my is my first love. And so I'm actually that's one of the reasons why I wanted to build a team, which I'm sure we'll get to that, is to encourage other agents to have better of a work life balance and get some of my time back myself. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, you know, after high school. And, you know, you said you went to college. Um, you know, what what did you go to college for? What was the focus? Um, you know, was it something that, uh, you know, in your family, it was kind of uh, pushed on or was it just kind of something that you wanted to do? Yeah, that's 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 a great question. So I was I tell people I kind of fell into Ohio State. It's not what my first pick was. Um, I was looking, we had some family in Georgia at the time. Atlanta was a place that I really mm -hmm. wanted to go. Uh, I actually got ex accepted into Clark Atlanta. I just didn't pack my bags and, and pack things ready to go. Got accepted in everything. It just, it's like, you know, I, I'll just go to Ohio State, I guess. I just didn't feel like moving. And so went to Ohio State. Uh, college wasn't, wasn't pushed on me. My mother really encouraged me to go to college. So it was something like, oh, I guess I'll go to college. Yeah. So. Um, it was a great experience. You know, I would do it all over again. Um, I was able to join a fraternity, which I'm still very active uh, into today. I made some really good connections. And so, and, and even some strong friendships that I still have. So 
college for me, because I'm a local guy, Ohio State attracts so many people worldwide. Yeah. Um, I already had some friendships before I went to the campus. And so having the benefit of not living on campus in my later part of my college career was those are really the best years, right? Because I got the best of both worlds. I had this this isolation of being on campus during the day, and I was able to kind of hang out with my childhood friends during the evening. So it was fun. What did you focus on as far as um, degree? Yes. Yeah, so I had a I had a major in uh, political science. Um, so that was political science, criminal justice. That was my major, and I had a minor in uh, photography, film photography specifically. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then, you know, post post college, you know, talk talk to me about the career field. When did you graduate? You know, what was kind of the, the first path that you got into? Yeah, I was doing a little bit too much partying. So <laughs> <laughs> I actually graduated early, surprisingly, because I was doing a lot of partying. But I say that because life kind of came at me quick, you know, so graduated a semester early mm. uh, and, and didn't really have it figured out. I'm like I was thinking about going to um, the Mort's College of Law at Ohio State, yeah. didn't really submit my application because I'm like, man, I didn't really want all this college debt. And so, you know, that really discouraged me, if I'm being honest, just looking at the amount of debt. At that time, there was an influx of attorneys in the marketplace. So I was really looking at like my future projected career earnings. So that really discouraged me. Um, so I went to sales. I started off mm -hmm. at finish line. Um, that was really my job that I had during the later part of my college career. I um, got recruited there and hmm. went to, went into management for a little bit um, and decided that wasn't the direction I wanted to go long term. Yeah. Um, I actually had a district manager who challenged me that I couldn't do management and finish line at the same uh, management at finish line and uh, graduate college at the same time. So that really, it motivated me. I wanted to prove him wrong, which I did, right? It was kind of like an yeah. internal motivational factor. But after it was all said and done, I'm like, man, maybe this is not something I want to do long term. Man, retail so, retail's tough. It is. It is very I tough. Mean, so. I don't know how. I did retail for a hot second in high school. Uh, and then obviously for a, a quick stint in college, you know, during the, the winter season. And I was just like, nah, I can't do this. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, even the managers, right? I mean, they always worked long hours, did. you know, six days a week, um, you know, and then, you know, on top of that, you're doing school and all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, it was challenging. And so when I left finish line, I waited till about a, it was about a year and a half or two years after I graduated college where I had, had left, uh, was there for some time. And, um, Really from there, I, I had a tough time finding my feet. I had got fired from a job. Uh, first time I ever got fired, I didn't hop around as much. I did a stint at Dish Network in sales. Um, mm. You know, that was fun. And, and one of my buddies, he was actually at AT&T. And I really do feel like AT&T was a catalyst for, for where I'm at today. It, mm. it taught me some great relationship uh, skills and and client management or keeping track of leads. A lot of things that AT&T taught me, even just relationship building, I, I've been able to apply to my real estate business. Yeah. So that has been like the summary of my, um, my work experience. Did you enjoy the retail setting? What a great question. So at AT&T, it was the, it's retail, but we didn't have traditional retail hours because we were still closed compared to like if I was still at finish line. Sure. So the climate when I first came in at t was great, man. Um, to be honest, uh, I was actually repeatedly in the top sales reps here in Ohio. Mm. Uh, and I had aspirations to go corporate and go to Minnesota. You know, there was some other opportunities for me within the company to move on. So it, I, I did, looking back on it, I did enjoy it. The, the latter part of my career at t I enjoyed less because, yeah. you know, management changed and culture had changed yeah so but looking back at it, i was extremely grateful for that for that time there what's something you know i talk about this all the time i bring on a lot of new agents into the industry right like that's what i'm passionate about we talked about it a little bit before um and you know i always tell people you know the one great thing about real estate is is you don't have to sell over the phone right it, it, you know real estate is not this thing that 
um, if you lose them or they leave, that you're never going to potentially co contact them or speak with them again. Whereas in sales, like what you were doing, right? If they leave your store, they might be going to Verizon next door, right? Yeah. Or they might be going to T-Mobile, you know, or they may go to another AT&T store. And, yeah. um, you know, so first of all, I know that those sales skills transitioned into real estate. I'm curious, you know, what is something that maybe it had, you know, is still with you just in the real estate business instead of it being in, in the other sales businesses that you're a part of? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ask some great questions. So how I actually met my broker, he was a client of mine at at and And I remember the buddy who helped me get on to at and he, at one point he worked in my store and I was on vacation and he kept saying, man, people kept coming in. Hey, is CJ here? Is CJ here? And he's like, man, what are you doing to these people? Like they're only asking for you. And so, uh, very, yes, we had to deal with competitors with eight, you know, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, but really it was about elevating your skills outside of delivering phone service. It was the cable and internet and security system. And so I had a really great manager, uh, Dante, Dante Ferris. He's with Nationwide now. Um, he, he did a really good job and like helped molding me in a, even an elevated salesman as an elevated salesman within the company. And it was just a follow-up. Right. He's like, CJ, you know, even though people say no today, they'll say yes tomorrow. And just giving myself the opportunity to stay in front of people. And when they came back, even if they didn't sign up for a new service, hey, what can I do for you today that adds value? Right. And that was that's something that I carry into my real estate business today, like past clients, future prospects. Right. What is the value that I can bring to you today? If you don't need anything, great. If you do. If you need anything, whether it's real estate related or not, even if you need me to connect you with a contractor, lender, whoever, how can I add value to you today? Mm. And that's I got that from AT and T. Yeah, if they don't, I like that. If they don't say no, if they don't, can you say that part one more time? If yeah, they absolutely. Say no to you today, say, yep. If they don't say yes today, they'll say yes tomorrow. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. So lead me up to your career journey to switching gears and saying. I want to give this real estate thing a try. Uh, you yeah. know, what year, what year was it? You know, when did you make that decision? Yeah. Um, and how did you make that decision? So I, I tell people, because a lot of people ask me, well, how did you find real estate or, you know, how did you come across success in real estate? And I wasn't looking for it. Um, my broker's name is Rich Russo. He was actually introduced to me through a client named Steve Osmond. Um, I helped Steve. Didn't know Rich at all. Uh, Steve, I was working with Steve. So I was I got hired at AT&T 2012. So this was about, I met Steve about 2014. Helped him with some things. And one time, this was in 2015, he said, hey, you should meet my buddy Rich. I said, well, I, I don't know who he is, sure, whatever. <laughs> and he said, well, next time I come to the store, man, I'm bringing him with me. I said, okay. So Rich comes in and, and Rich is this very high energy guy, um, loving to death. Um, and he, you know, sometimes he does jabs. He kind of, he, he likes to test people in a, in a, in a, in a, in a funny way. And so um, Rich came back, they, there's a, there was a Starbucks next to uh, our store. And Steve would always go next door to get Starbucks whenever he came to AT&T. And so went to uh, Starbucks next door played backgammon because they used to meet up to play backgammon, came back in. Um, and Rich said, hey, man, I think you should work for me. I'm like, well, I don't even really know who you are. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we get to, he gets to tell me, you know, he's in real estate. And he said, no, I think you're great with people. We should think of, you should think about it. Mm -hmm. and at that time, I was actually transitioning into management at at and and Dante Ferris and I were both going to go to this new store, turn that store around, get that sales going. Because our store had, for most of the year, was number one in the market wow. at, that, at that district. And so um, I said, oh, I'll think about it. And so to shorten the story, um, Rich stayed in touch with me. And there were some things at at and that I started to, Dante had moved on. I didn't really feel like they did a good job of taking care of him. And he was a mentor of mine. And uh, it just kind of opened my eyes on corporate America, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I called Rich. I said, hey, man, I got two weeks of vacation. Can I shadow you? He said, yeah. 
So I literally sat in his car, went on appointments with him. Um, they pretty wow. much throughout his whole day. And uh, at the time, I was dating this young lady who is now my wife. <laughs> and after shadowing Rich for about a week and a half, I'm like, you know, Shantae, I, I really I really do like this real estate thing. And she was like, well, you should look into it. So you know, I went to do my classes. And, and so I got my license in 2016. And from there... It was it was slow, yeah, slower than I expected. Well, I want to go. Back, I want to go back real quick because I don't. I don't want to skip over it. Yeah, and I think this is something I talked. To. I just you know I had an agent in my car today. Um, you know, a new agent getting into the business, and I said, you know, hey, I don't know if you. And he took notes like we talked the whole time, right? But like I said, you need to do this daily. Like you before you ever became an agent, you said, let me burn two weeks of my vacation mm -hmm. to ride around to see if this is something I want to do. Mm -hmm. And what I tell agents all the time is, you know, like today, you know, we didn't really get much done, but it was a real estate agent stuff that we had to do. Drop a sign, right? You know, put a lockbox on, run out to a, you know, an inspection, you know, talk to our client for a hot second, you know, get back to the office. And, you know, I, I told that agent, I said, you know, like you just riding around in the car. This is what agents do, you know, and obviously you need to take this time to ask questions. Right. You know, just don't sit here and small talk with stuff. But this is your time to see and ask and do real estate things. And, uh, you know, kudos to you for taking two weeks of your vacation from a yeah. job that you had to to ride around with a dude that you didn't really know um, to see if real estate was something that you wanted to to take on. Yeah. And, and I'm forever grateful for Rich about that. I'm still with him today. You know, I've been in this business yeah. going eight years and he's taught me a lot. He's taught me a lot outside of real estate and, and he knows how grateful I am for him. And he, just like Adante, he elevated my sales skills, right? Or just even my, I, at this point, they're no longer sales skills, they're just people skills, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, it, it's crazy that you bring that up because one of the agents on my team who is doing very well, she just recently relocated to Phoenix and building her business out there because she got married and doing some great things in her personal life. She tells people all the time, like, they're like, well, you know, you got things up and running. She was like, because of CJ, I sat in his car, went on all of his appointments. And, and I think people undersell that value, right? Like you said, it's like so often people go in and looking for money, right? Yeah. I tell people, if you're in this business for money, you're in the wrong business, right? And so, Go in, go in it looking for mentorship. Go in it looking for guidance. And the other results will come. But you got to put that investment in first um, and, and putting the time in first, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so so, you have this, you know, week and a half, two week experience, seeing yeah. what the life and the lifestyle of a real estate agent was uh, or is. Um, 2016, you're at this pivotal moment of, of potentially switching careers. And um, so, you know, when you made that decision, doubters, supporters, you know, because and I don't know if you're 100 percent commission, you know, at your other job. But, you know, a lot of times you're you're taking on, you know, real estate. We don't make an income unless we have a sale. Right. Unless we're talking to people. So, you know, for you, you know, what what helped fuel that that transition period of of becoming a real estate agent? Yes. Great question. So. Um, supporters was definitely my wife. You know, we were still boyfriend and girlfriend at that time. Um, and I had to humble myself. I was living by myself. I called my mom, said, Hey mom, I'm thinking about a career change. Can I move back in with you? Here I am. Here I am 26 years old. I mean, I could do it myself. Right. But I was looking to reset my life from being honest with you, John, like I was looking to make a career move. You know, I, I've been through corporate America. I was looking to put all my chips in the middle of the table and say, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go all in. So I, my mom let me move back in. I was, you know, I was a, her roommate. I made sure I had grocery money to provide to the house. <laughs> uh, and, and really what I did was the moment that I thought about leaving um, AT&T, I had saved up some money. And I tell people this, like when I was, when I first started, I literally had, my dress clothes in my car. So the moment I walked out of at and I changed my clothes and did real estate stuff. So I was working mm -hmm. nonstop. When I, where I wasn't at at and
should be good. Okay. I uh, had a conversation with my uh, now wife, then girlfriend at the time. And I told Shantae, I said, hey, I really like this real estate. I really say, like this real estate thing. I'm having fun. I'm having the most fun I've had in years. Um, I said, I, I, I really want to go full time. And she said, babe, I believe in you. She's like, if you like what you do, you've saved up money, go do it. And so I put in my two week no notice and went full time in real estate. And how long, how long were you in that transition period of still doing AT&T and, and real estate? I was doing that for about 10 months before I went to full time. So at the beginning, the beginning of 2017 is really when I went full time. So 2016, I had a really strong fall and winter. And then I remember having a specific closing in January. And I left, went full time and proposed to my wife and uh, went full time, man. And, and really hasn't I really haven't looked back. Yeah. You know, I, you know, you mentioned a couple of things there. One. You said I had to humble myself and I moved back in, you know, with my with my mom. And I think that's a conversation, you know, that's sacrifice to me. Right. You know, that's sacrifice. And I I never had to, quote unquote, transition into real estate. You know, I graduated from Ohio State three weeks later. You know, I was an admin for my team lead. I'm still with my team lead. So I'm with been with him since 2011. So, nice. you know, shout out to you because there's not much loyalty in this business. Uh, and, and I'm not saying people jumping around is a bad thing, yeah, yeah. but but I think sometimes agents lose sight of the people that put you on. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for me, Ryan, I've been with him since day one of my career. But, you know, I graduated from Ohio State three weeks later, found him and I was his admin doing real estate stuff. And then, you know, I, I went through summer classes and, and got my license at the end of summer and I was off and running. But, you know. I think I talk about it a lot with agents, you know, the level of sacrifice that it takes yeah. that you're going to have to make decisions on. And that might be that, you know, it's less time with family. It's less time with your kids. It's less time with your friends. It's less time that you have to sleep. It's less <laughs> things that you spend money on. You know, maybe you sell your car, right. You know, and you were willing to go back and move in, you know, with your mom, in order to make sure that you put yourself in the best possible position to succeed, you know, within this business. And so I just wanted to, you know, give you a shout out on that because a lot of people see what we do, you know, from afar and they think it's easy, yes. um, but they don't understand or they don't know yet, or they haven't experienced yet, you know, a lot of the inconsistencies that happen within our business, even though we do everything, you know, maybe we're doing the right things. We're prospecting, we're lead generating, we're doing all of those things, but there's a lot of stuff outside of our control that ultimately affect whether or not we get paid and it's not up to us. Right. And, and I, I want to speak on the fact that you talked about the person who brought you into the business. Um, you know, I, I always shared this story because this was a pivotal point in my life. I remember I was going through real estate with like two other realtors that I actually, um, two other colleagues that I actually knew prior to all, all of us getting licensed. And one in particular, she was kill, she was hitting the ground where she was killing it, killing it, killing it. And she's calling me, CJ, I'm killing it. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I storm into Rich's office early in the morning. I said, hey, man, you're, you're not giving me leads. This person over here is getting leads. They're, they're you know, she, they're setting her up for success. And you're not doing anything to help me. And he said, well, you're very calm. He said, you know, you want me to feed you leads, but what have you done for yourself? He said, you, you know, because I was like, I think I'm about to leave brokerage. I'm going to go to another brokerage and give me leads and, and do way more than what you're doing for me. He said, well, I don't think you need a, I don't think you need a broker change. You need a mindset change. He said, so before you step into my office, how about think about ways that you can be successful in the things that you can do to make things happen? Have you met with people? Have you gone out with lunches with people? Have you set up appointments? Have you networked? So before you ask me for leads, what are the things that you can do for yourself? Hmm. And that was something that I realized, wow, this was the first time in my life that I had some type of conflict and someone gave me exactly what I needed to, even though I didn't want to hear it. It's what I needed to hear. And he pretty much in that moment said, no, take accountability of your own business is what I heard. Right. Yeah. You'll be responsible for your business and then the other stuff will come with it. 
Yeah. And so, you know, for that, that's probably one of the single reasons why I'm still with Rich, because I know at any moment, good, bad or indifferent, he's going to be transparent with me, even in spite of how I may view him or how, his delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Let's dive into your real estate business. You know, what were the first couple of years like? You know, obviously you had the transition period, right? You know, and, and balancing all of that, yeah. you know. Did you have, uh, you know, being a hometown, you know, guy and and here and having a sphere and a network, you know, did you hit the ground running with, you know, deals? When did you have your first deal? Kind of walk me through those first couple of years. What did you focus on? How did you build your business? Yeah, great question. So um, while I was part time, um, leading into the time where I went full time, I just focused on um, my sphere of influence. And so it was really slow when I was part time, but I still was able to get a deal here, a deal there. And the amount of money I saved up, I said, well, if I can close at least one or two deals a year, I can at least survive. Right. Yeah. And then once I left my job, I really just went all in of what Rich has taught me is about setting up lunch meetings. Right. Reconnecting with people, letting them know that you're in the business. And then I would I join certain organizations so I can network and network with a purpose. Say, you know, not looking for the sale, looking to expand my relationship pool. Right. And so always leading with trying to help others first. And so what I tell a lot of my new agents is a lot of your book of business is already in your phone. Right. So, you know, if people don't know that you sell real estate, that that's the simplest thing you can do. Right. And that's what I did. Right. I, I set up and, and yes, I had high school friends I can, you know, go back and touch on, but people who I haven't connected with in a long time. Hey, this is what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I know that you knew that I was once in corporate America or with AT&T. I'm in real estate. So if you ever have a real estate need, you know, I would love to talk to you about it. Wouldn't even ask you for business. I would love to just have a conversation. And so that's really kind of what I focus on is is working, working my sphere of influence. And a lot of that is what a CRM that I use. I still use a CRM to this day. Um, setting up lunch meetings, coffee meetings, doing networking events. I did the things that didn't cost me a lot of money. Yeah. That all I had to do was just follow up, follow up, follow up. And and that's the secret to my sauce. You know, that's my secret recipe to this day is that I I have clients say, "Man, you thank you for following up with me." Like I just follow up, and so. Until you tell me, no, we're going to go in a different direction or we want to interview with someone else or we want to choose a different agent. You know, I still feel like I, there's an opportunity that I could be the best person to help you out. And I believe in that. And so yeah. that's really what I've dug my heels into, uh, not only the beginning of my career, but that's still my mindset today. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I did not build my business through networking, so that's not my strength at all. Uh, I'm the dude that's in the corner. Like, you know, if I don't know anyone, I'm just by myself, you know, you know, so I love that because I, I, uh, coach agents on leaning into your strengths. Don't worry about weaknesses. Like I, I was just talking to one of my agents today. I don't do open houses. Do they work? 100%. Do they work for me? No, probably because of my mindset and attitude around them. But I, you know, for me, it's harder to connect with people that are strangers. There's nothing wrong with admitting that, right? So for you and maybe someone that's watching this, maybe they're newer and they're like, I don't have leads. You know, I don't have, you know, money to spend on X, Y, and Z to, to get, you know, mailers out or whatever the case may be. What would be some of, and I know you dropped some of them, but what would be some of your tips to networking, you know, effectively and efficiently? Yes, absolutely. So if, especially if you are from another city, um, or even if you're from Columbus, but especially if you're from another city, use local organizations like a Kiwanis. I joined Kiwanis, like a young professional group, multiple or young professional groups. Right. And so I still go to networking events to this day because I like to meet new people. You know, it's funny, John, that you say, you know, strangers got like, OK, stranger danger. But my uh, my wife will joke like CJ, he'll just be in the grocery store and start talking to somebody. I just love people. Like I genuinely love people. We'll travel. I'll talk to a guy in the airport and have a whole conversation and be like, hey, man, CJ, nice to be nice to meet you, John. You know, so that's just my personality. And um, it's it's just natural for me. So that's what I leaned into. And so for people who are looking to network with a purpose, go to a networking event and say, I'm going to leave with three numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you only leave with one number, you left more than zero. Right. And so. Uh, and, and then foster genuine connections. So 
a lot of times I don't even tell people I'm a realtor. I just say how I'm in real estate. And it leaves it open to imagination, if you will. And I try to move on because I never want to feel like it's a sale because that's really not what I'm looking for. I'm really looking to expand my relationship network. And I think if you go to network event, networking events, try to get three numbers. And then when you get those numbers, follow up with those people. Go out to lunch, right? Learn more about them. Learn, learn about your family, to have them learn about your family, learn about their family. And I, I think doing those things, when I say networking with a purpose, going and trying to build another relationship, not another sale. And that uh, that the other results will come. Yeah. So, you know, how, so you built your business networking sphere, you know, through connection. You know, I heard, you know, a connector. Right. You know, I'm sure you've connected a lot of people. Um, I want to kind of lead me up to current day. You know, how has your business been? I know you now have a team. You know, when did you decide to build the team? You know, why uh, did you build the team? Just kind of lead me up to your you know, your, your current day of, of, you know, real estate agent and team lead. Yeah. So uh, let's see here. So around 2018, I really started to see my business spiking. Um, I would say I had a, I had a part-time admin closer to the end of 2018, which was one of my close friends who really just did me a solid. I was like, Hey, I need, she's like, I could tell you're stressed. You need help. I was like, yeah, I need help. <laughs> So uh, we're still close to this day as well. And um, I was able to hire kind of like another part time. She was working at the same time helping me. She was a part time admin. And so was able to, again, elevate my business in 2019. Uh, when I got married, I had a, another part time admin uh, who was actually coming back to my team as a sales rep. Um, and it was going to be more of a sales role, like a, a realtor. And then really my, in 2020 is really when my stride really started to take off. So in 2020, I did 2000, 2018, I did my first 10 million in production. And I remember this because I told Rich I was going to do 10 million. He's like, you're not going to do 10 million. I was like, if I do 10 million, you're paying for my honeymoon, bro. And then you pay for my <laughs> So uh, 2018, I did 10 mil. 2019, I did about just shy of that, like 9.8. So took a little step back. Reason why I did that is because I started to see that I was, there was only so much capacity I had. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when I decided like, I want more in life besides working. Cause I love to work, but I'm like, okay, now I'm starting to see a transition in. My friends were already used to not seeing me when I started my business. They're like, he's really not around now. <laughs> so wanted to kind of get some of that time back. And then in 2020, um, we did about a, we did 11.7 mil in production. And Kara, who is now my full time admin, she's my partner in crime, um, and we just we kill it. So, you know, we brought in Liara around 2000, 2021. She's the one who relocated to Arizona. She did a million dollars in production in her first year of real estate. Um, she was she she was I mean, and now she still service our investor clients, but she's doing really well. So. Now, fast forward to 2024. Last year, we did 13.8 million in sales. Uh, we're having a strong year so far. And we just brought on a guy and we're bringing on Salam, one of my past uh, part-time admins is coming back as a, as a full-time realtor on the team. So uh, now she's coming back as a, a full-time realtor on the team. So uh, we're extremely blessed. We're still having fun. And uh, the reason why I wanted to do a team to answer that question is because I know what Rich did for me. I know there are other ways I would have done it differently, not to mm. take anything away from him. Yeah. And to be honest with you, John, man, I'm, I'm at the point now that I like to see others win. I'm yeah. a competitive person, but I've, I used to play. I like to see how ex, uh, new agents, how excited they are when they first come in the business yeah. and, and to, to help develop them. So my focus now, and I actually have a coach, I have a real estate coach, Don Sharp out of uh, Kansas City, Missouri. She is amazing, by the way. Um, she has a team. 
And so being coached by other people, it's, it gives me, it has given me a new energy in this business. So yeah, that's kinda, hopefully that answers your question. No, I love it. <clears throat> you know, I, I think, uh, you know, you probably had an experience. I had an experience that most people don't have when they get into this business, you know, and I feel like it's my obligation and my duty to kind of give back to the, to the new agent world, you know, yeah. of, you know, real estate's hard, but it's fairly simple. The principles are fairly simple, right? You know, how many people are you speaking to with today, you know, about real estate? And, um, you know, if you just break it down to that simplistic format, um, you know, it, it's just a conversation game. Uh, so mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And I love that now you're kind of, ex you know, expanding and, and giving that back to, um, to the, to the agents getting into this business because it's done wonders for you. And I know it's done wonders for me. So yeah. Um, CJ, I want to kind of move forward and transition to kind of future goals and, you know, yeah. where you want to take things, you know, with your business. And, you know, I always tell agents, <clears throat> you know, to me, real estate is more about what lifestyle do you want to live? You mm -hmm. know, you said, hey, I got to a point where like I was just working, you know, making great money. But what's it all for if you don't if you don't have anything to do with it? Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, so for what, what what's something that you're looking to accomplish you know, within your business over the next 12 months? Yeah, over the next 12 months, I really want to get uh, the, the guy that just joined our team. His name is Monty. Um, you know, I really I have go more so goals for my agents than I do myself now. Right. I want Monty to at least do one or two mil in production over the next 12 months. I want Salam to be able to do one or two million in production over the next 12 months. And so as a team, I would really want us to hit 17 million in production um, this year. I mean, that that's the goal. I mean, I know the bar is high, but I, I do think that we can achieve it. And yeah. so um, long term, I, I really want to empower my agents more and be more of a coaching and developing role. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's really where I want to start transitioning to. Yes, I know that my production will scale back. I mean, really last year, 90%, 96% of all our sales were referral basis. So I'm already kind of comfortable there. We've added some new uh, widgets, if you will, to our business that will give us some growth. Um, and, and a lot of that growth I want to use to pour into my agents. So I, I really want to get to a point where I can do, you know, six to 10 mil, but really focus on like personal production, which that, that doesn't stretch me too thin. And that gives me time to still coach my agent. And over time, I want to scale that back and, and really um partner with rich to to foster a good energy and more agents to come into this brokerage so that's my long-term goal i want to get out more less production and get others to produce and, yeah. and pour it to them that's that's where my that's kind of where i'm leaning to spend more time with my kids and my wife man it's you know that's where i'm at yeah what's a five-year goal for you yeah, five-year goal. I would love to bring on another full-time admin because Kara is amazing, but she has her hands full with all our deals. <laughs> uh, so have another admin and and um, have two more agents. So I would like to at least have a team size, including myself, about seven people, seven eight people. So that's my that's my five-year goal, and for us to be doing about twenty-five million, uh, thirty million in production. And nice. so that that's. I more so have a unit goal, like within the next five years, I would love to see us as a team do about a hundred units. And yeah. so um, that will be, that's really a goal that I have in mind. I love it. What's a legacy goal for you, CJ? Wow. Legacy goal. Legacy goal is that when people mention my name in real estate from, from those who know me say that I was a good person and mm -hmm. that my agents on my team said, CJ really, help me get me where I'm at. And rather this team is a, is a long-term fit for you or a short time, short term fit for you. I will hope that I had a positive impact on, on your viewpoint of real estate and how it can change your life. Um, and that my clients felt, felt that I did a service to them and that I was beneficial to their lives. And so I always want my name to be mentioned in a positive light. Yeah. And, and, and mostly I want my kids to say that dad was always there. I want my wife to say that I was always there. I was always present. So my legacy goals are more people impact. Um, and so, it, yeah, 
I, I, that's what I think of when I hear the word legacy is what imprint did I make on other people in my family? Last question for you. Um, I, I enjoyed this conversation, you know, uh, yeah. you know, you and I have been social media friends for a little, you know, for a while and, you know, haven't had the chance to really connect. So, you know, I love, you know, understanding, you know, your journey and, you know, just how you think about the business. You built your business completely opposite of mine. Um, so I really love this conversation today. What is one piece of advice that you could give our audience? Maybe it's something that you got early in your career. Maybe it's something that you share now, you know, with your agents, or maybe it's just something if, you know, someone says, Hey, CJ, I need something, you know, to keep me going in real estate. What would that be? Yeah, actually it would be two pieces of advice. Um, and this is through lear learned experience and something that I got from Rich is that the first thing is that real estate is a, is a marathon, not a sprint. And realizing that if you're a competitor like myself, um, knowing that a lot of people in real estate are successful due to two things, persistent in time, right? If you're persistent for a long period of time, you typically get better results. And again, that goes back to having being it being a marathon, not a sprint. So knowing that for you to survive in this business, you just have to survive and the results will come as long as you're doing good business. And then the second thing is just knowing that your, your business matures. And so with that marathon in mind, know that you, you grow and get stretched in time. So like for me living at home with my mom, I know it was more wise for me to keep all my liquid cash for emergencies instead of dumping it in ad spend and mailers. That just wasn't a good fit for where I'm at in life. But now I do those things, but I didn't do them day one. And so knowing that if you're going to build a business, know that it's going to mature in time. So your, your expenses might be super lean in the beginning. And as you continue to grow, you have more resources to put back into your business. So those will be my two pieces of advice for those who are new to the business or are looking to grow as Realize it's a marathon, not a sprint. So your goal should be over a course of time and very obtainable. And then the second piece would be realize that you have your business will mature. So you don't have to have everything figured out today. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, those that are watching, um, CJ's phone number has been at the bottom of the screen. If you're someone that's thinking about buying, selling, investing in real estate, make sure you hit them up. If you're a real estate agent, and you just, you know, love this vibe and love this story and you want to go and join his team, you know, make sure you guys reach out to him. Obviously, he just poured into into you and, and uh, you know, he's pouring into other agents as well, uh, you know, within the marketplace. Uh, but CJ, for those that are listening, you know, in on the podcast, what is the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, best way, honestly, is just reach out to me on my cell, 614-208-0642. You can also email me at CJA Churchill, C H U R C H I L L at gmail.com. Um, those are the best two ways to get, get a hold of me. And uh, so I thank you for this opportunity, John. This was amazing. I enjoyed uh, doing this podcast with you. And I look forward to us to continue to connect outside of this podcast as well. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, CJ. I appreciate you. Likewise. Thanks, John. All right. See you.